All right. Hi, everyone. So today I want to talk a little bit about some basic plant biology, and then we're going to go into allocation and how plants choose where they allocate their resources. So I want to start with photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is our process by which we take water and carbon dioxide, add light energy, and create sugars in the form of glucose. So these are our carbohydrates. And as a byproduct, we also produce oxygen gas. Now these carbohydrates are taken to make the rest of the plant. And so with the addition of some nutrients, we can make more complex carbohydrates, make proteins, make lipids, and make nucleic acids. Now these four, this group, these four groupings are what we call macromolecules, are four classes of micromolecules. And we use these resources for all sorts of things. There's so many uses within a plant. So we could allocate some to microbes and symbionts in the soil. So these are the fungi, the bacteria, living in the soil on the plant roots. We might allocate towards respiration. Plants have to breathe as well. Plants have to defend themselves against attacks. So we have tons of different insects that attack plants. Um, we have animals that graze against plants. And so plants produce all sorts of defenses uh, to prevent that. And so plants also have to grow. That takes resources. Some plant, uh, plants also store a lot of resources for times of need. When plants reproduce, when they make their flowers, when they make their pollen, when they make their seeds, these things take a lot of resources. And then just growing, existing in the environment takes resources. It costs to maintain your tissues. And so how plants allocate these resources among these different uses is really unclear. And so how do plants create such a budget? How do plants know to think about all of these different things? Well, one of the big pieces is resource availability. Resource availability and where the plant takes up its nutrients is key to how they are going to allocate nutrients. So if we're looking at this plant right here, this little cartoon, we're going to think about a few different things. First, we have light coming in at the leaves from the sun. So this is critical for photosynthesis and making all of our um, all of the resources we need for plants to function. We also have carbon dioxide getting taken up by the leaves. So carbon dioxide enters the plant through the little stomatas, uh, stomata or the holes on the leaves. And so this is also critical for photosynthesis. And then in the roots, we take up our water and we take up our nutrients. So the nutrients we primarily think of are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, although there are lots of other micronutrients which we need in much smaller amounts. So these are things like calcium or boron or iron. Now, the critical place here is how resource availability is gonna govern these allocation patterns. And so here I've drawn just a little plant with some green leaves, a brown stem, and some blue roots. This is a normal healthy plant, or at least that's what we're calling it here. And so we can kind of think about this plant as allocating in a standard normal way. So this is what it would look like if there were no other stresses. And so you can kind of think about above and below ground tissues as being balanced. You have enough tissue above ground to collect light and bring in carbon dioxide, but we also have enough tissue below ground to where we're able to take up enough water and take up enough nutrients from the soil. So then what's probably gonna happen with a droughted plant? So remember, this is a drought, so there's less water in the soil and the plant's gonna be trying to go after that water. And so what's likely gonna happen is we're gonna see much less allocation to above ground tissues and more to the below ground. So here, what I've done is we've drawn smaller leaves, a smaller stem above ground and many, many more roots. So these plants, if they're in a drought, may be looking for water, actively searching. This is probably an exaggeration with that amount of root growth, but this is just to get your mind wrapped around the idea that the plants are kind of growing and allocating resources towards the limiting resource. So here, because they're droughted and they're dry, they may, they're gonna allocate more resources towards roots, which are critical for taking up water. On the other hand, we have a shade plant. So shade plants, these are plants growing in the shade. They're not getting very much sunlight. Now, these plants are in a different situation. Sunlight's critical and has to be taken up in leaves, but you're in the dark, so we're going to try to allocate more above ground so that we can take up more light. And so shade plants are very well known 
to have much bigger leaves, to be pretty flat, wide leaves. And so here we have fewer res resources allocated to the roots. It's not much less. Um, and then the stem's about the same height, but look how much bigger the leaves are. And that's because it's trying to catch the light. And so bigger leaves cover more area. And so more of that light that's just filtering in into the shade areas. Um, and it might just be temporal. It might not be there all the time. There may not be very much light at all, but these leaves will catch it because they're much bigger. And so shade plants allocate more to their leaves rather than their roots. And so they have a higher uh, allocation to their above ground than their below ground tissues. And so again, I wanna emphasize plants often allocate their resources towards the tissues responsible for taking up the limiting resource. So in droughts, we might allocate more to the roots to take up more water. If we're in the shade, we'll allocate more in the leaves to take up more light. So for your research here at Governor's School, I want you to kind of think about how these principles are influencing your results. Could plastics in the soil drastically alter resource availability and therefore alter plant responses? Maybe microbes are influencing allocation and there's a few different ways this might happen. So think about that. And then could allocation also be altered by other things like a fire nearby, like grazing, like very loud sounds. There are all sorts of things that can influence allocation and the choices uh, that a plant makes in choosing how to allocate its resources. So we'll chat more about this in person and in our meetings, uh, but please do let me know if you have any questions about the basic plant bio we talked about today and resource allocation. Thanks.